In this video, I'm going to give you a very quick overview of the API Challenges, which is our website for learning about API testing with some practice APIs that you can use to improve your skills and learn how to use tools. So if you head over to apichallenges.eviltester.com, you will find a learning zone which has lots of information about how web applications work, how REST APIs work, um, various tools that you can use, HTTP clients, and lots of other practice sites that you can use to improve your testing and hints on what to do with those practice sites. Because one of the issues that people have is that when they're faced with an application, a practice application, they often don't know what to do with it. That's one of the reasons why we created the API challenges in the first place, but we'll come on to that later. So if you wanted to start learning APIs, you've read some of the documentation. What I suggest you do is you start working through the API simulator. With the API simulator, there's a list of requests to do in order. Uh, no data is saved on the server. No, you can't damage anything. It will always be the same data. So let me get Bruno up here and have a quick follow through of the simulator. So simulator is saying the first thing I should do is get all the entities, which I can do by issuing a get request on the URL with slash sim slash entities as the endpoint. It will say I should see a 200 status code, which I do. And I can see the JSON payload. Great. So I've made my first API request in here. Step two, I should get a single entity, which I can do by adding a slash one on here to get entity number one which I've done. It's coming back in JSON. For practice, I could get other entities. Let me get number seven. Great. So I'm starting to use an API with a very simple simulator. Now, once you've mastered the simulator, you've got a grasp on the tooling, then you can head over to the simple API. Simple API is, as its name suggests, a very simple API where you can get update uh, entities in the server. You can delete items without having to use any authentication. And if you've got a tool that supports open API files, you can download the open API file for this API. So let me start having a look at the simulator. I've got the API docs here. So if I want some extra help, I can look through the docs, see what validation rules are available in the fields. I can see what entity formats we want to do, and I can see the basic endpoints but I've also downloaded the open API file into Bruno so I can start making requests in here. So I'm going to change this to a get to get all the items. And I can see that there's a whole bunch of items in there. So what I can do is I could actually create a new item. I'll do a post here and I'll make it a type CD and put that in. Oh, so the value of the ISBN is not unique. So let me change that. So we've got validation here. This is a real API that we're working with. Now, because it's a real API on the server, I can also come up here and look at the data that's in the server. So if I don't want to do everything through the API, I can come in here and I can see there's the CD that we created. It's got ID number 13. So that's good. So we've started using an actual API. Now, the good thing about the simple API is all the data is primitives and values. So there's no open ended strings. You will never see anyone's personal information in this application. It is stored on the server. It's multi user and the data will refresh. So if you delete all the information, then it will automatically add some more test data in there for you. And if you try and add too many, then it will warn you and say you can't add more than 100 instances in this database, and then you can start deleting them. So it's a very easy API to work with. Now, once you've experimented with the API and you want to learn more about the kind of things you might want to do when you're testing, that's why we created the API challenges. So with the API challenges, there's a set of actual do this, solve this challenge, do this thing. And if you read the solution for that challenge, you'll see why it's important to issue get requests here, why it's important to use the head verb on endpoints. So to start with a API challenge, the first thing we have to do, we could download the open API file, import that into our API client, then we can start working with this, or you can just go through and follow the instructions are very easy to understand. We do have API documentation for all the endpoints. And again, that's very easy to understand. The API has a slightly different format than the simple API in order to give you more experience with different types of APIs. So the first thing I would do with the API challenges is I would try and create a 
challenger session. So to do that, I issue a post request on the slash challenger endpoint, and that's all explained in the documentation here. And it's actually the first challenge that we have to do, create a challenger session. So issue a post request on the challenger endpoint with no body. And in here, look for the X challenger header. And that is what I would then use in any future requests I make into the API. So I'm going to add this in as a header, the X challenger header, put that in there. And I'm going to get the to do's issue that request. I can see a list of to do's, but more than that, we've now tracked the completed challenges in the server. So if I put my challenger ID into the front end here, it's saying that I've completed four challenges. There's 59 challenges to complete. And you can see that I've created my challenger. I've got the to do's endpoint. I could try and get to do that's a nice, easy one. That should be invalid because all the endpoints are plural. So it's telling me there's a 404. But also if I refresh the screen here, I can see that that challenge has been completed. Now, in order to save my progress in these challenges, what I would do is save the progress to local storage. Then when I come back later, I can reload my progress into the server from local storage. Um, and I can also save my to do's if I want a copy of the database. So that if I've created um, 50 to do's that I want to keep working with, I can save them into my local storage and load them back into the system later on when I visit. So with the API challenges, we have got an API simulator to help you get started with your tools and learn things. Simple API, if you want to explore APIs without authentication, where you can create and delete entities without bothering about authentication. And then when you start getting serious and you want to practice, the API challenges has a list of challenges for you to work through that you can track your progress. And if you want to learn about how REST APIs work or find more practice sites or more tutorials, then look at the learning zone. And we're going to be expanding the content in here over time. So make sure you go off and visit apichallenges.eviltester.com and learn how to use and practice API testing and in general, just improve your testing skills.